So guys, welcome back to this animation series. In this video, we are going to complete the tab animation video that we actually started earlier. So we actually got this boilerplate from the React Native Post UI animation, and we are able to implement this tab. So this tab is actually what you are going to complete on this video. So before you continue watching, do make sure you hit the like button and also the subscribe button. Thank you. So guys, let's go ahead and complete this animation series that we started. So I wanted us to add this tab bar animation that we can see on the ending part of our screen. And our, our, of course, actually the tutorial is delayed, but let's go ahead and complete that away. So if you're following me, make sure you have this boilerplate. I, I will put down the link for the GitHub repository for you to grab it so that you can actually have this boilerplate of the design where we actually uh, did some scroll animations and also some gesture animations over here. So which is actually really cool, just that we wanted to add this tab animation we got from UI movements. And let's go ahead and add the animation. So I've already closed the tab I actually did that from, but let me go ahead and uh, open that quickly on my browser. But before that, can we just go over to our welcome screen? So let me go ahead and increase this font size because I want it to be a bit bolder. And I think this is better. So let's go down to the bottom area. And you can see over here, we we have to animate these tabs individually. But before that, let's just add uh, a background color or the animated background that we are going to be animating on. So let me just go ahead and add that. And then I'll open my browser to show you the design that we actually built this from. So over here, we're going to have a view. So inside this view, there is nothing that's going to be there. So I'm just going to close it, but it's going to have a style of the width. The width is going to be the segment. So if you've been following along, you will you will understand where we actually started from before we got to this part. Then we have the height. The height is going to be the same icon size plus the padding. So let me just go ahead and grab this and put it there. Then we have the position because we want it to actually flow to the left or to the right. We are going to make it a position absolute. Then we give it a Z index of negative one because you don't want it at the front. Then lastly, we're going to uh, give it a translate X uh, property, which we're actually going to define from the animation. But let me just say translate as uh, 200 or let me just use segment plus times one or let me just say segment plus one so let me just save that and we should actually get something here so it's not actually showing but let's go ahead and give it a background color of red so right away you have to see the background color of this is actually highlighted so if i uh, translate this at a zero uh, x rate you're going to see it's going to stay on the first one. So we are going to be using the animation value whenever we click on each of these to actually animate that back background color over there. So that's actually coming from uh, this UI movement tab animation. So that's where we actually got this challenge from. So I'm going to be dropping some cool animations. So just always check around and please don't forget to hit the like button and as well the subscribe button. Like right now, let's go ahead and create an animation value for our tab on press. We want it that whenever we press on this, we should actually have a tab bar animation. So I'm just going to go up. I'm gonna go up. So I have my throat, my throat is kind of, I don't know why. So we can use an active value of use value of zero. So this is um, animated node of number so let's just say that uh, it's not accepting it but we can just set it to number default so the use value here is just a, a default value animation so whenever we click on press i just have to use the active value and set that to the current index so the index is actually coming from our tab uh, map which is actually cool and with that i'm going to create a transition that we are going to pass down to this tab because even inside our tab we want to have this kind of uh, cool animation you can see the icon and the text expanding from the middle so we want to have something like that 
So I'm just gonna scroll up. I'm gonna create two forms of animation. The first animation is going to be for the background color, and the second animation is going to be the one that we are going to be using inside each of these single tab maps. So I'm gonna create a transition animation, which is going to use the with transition because we want to have a cool sliding effect. And we are transitioning with this uh, this active value. Then we just want it to have the duration of this normal duration. Don't worry about the other durations. We'll handle it when we go over to the tab component. And also I have to create for the translation. Let me just say translation. Uh, let me just do it this way. Translate exhalation. So this is gonna be a with spring. We're also translating with this, but for this one, it's gonna have some cool configuration because if you check here, we are using it with spring transition. So it's going to have a spring utils, spread it there, and we're gonna use the default configuration. We want the overshoot clamping to be true. And uh, lastly, we want the damping to be like a new animated value. We want it to be very, very smooth. So I'm just gonna use something like 100. So don't worry, when I apply this, you're gonna see how it's gonna work. So scrolling down here, uh, we have to scroll down to this background slide. So I'm gonna change this to translation and that should solve it. So let's go ahead and save and let's kind of click on this. Actually it's not translating. Oh guys, sorry for that. This is just the uh, translation animation, not actually the values that we are gonna translate with. So I'm just gonna, let me just uh, create a translate X animation. So just follow along. So I'm just gonna create a translate X animation, which is going to now interpolate with this translation. And it's gonna have, an input range of, so we want zero, one, and two. So if, why we use zero, one, and two is because our tabs over here, when you scroll up, you can see our tabs over here is three, and in JavaScript, it's usually start with zero. So we can actually use the reduce, or if you know how to use the higher order function like reduce, you can actually use it to uh, count the number of tabs, or you can actually use counts, but I just want to make this more practical so that anyone that's a newbie can really understand this. Now we have an output range. So at the first part is going to be a zero. So if you can recall, we the first animation we did here, so this happened to be a zero. I, I just changed it. So if you can recall some few seconds ago, we actually set this to zero. So the first one is gonna be zero. Where is it? And the second one is going to be the segment. And the last one is going to be the segment times two. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's give it a try. So you can see when I click on that automatically it changes. So we've been able to achieve uh, this kind of cool effect at the back. So it doesn't actually look exactly like this, but it kind of gives you an understanding of how you can actually build something cool this way. So that's how you can actually do uh, or achieve this kind of uh, transition. And if you can observe also, we actually use the width over here. So we didn't want the width to be excess or lesser than the actual width here. So that's why I overlay, I kept it at the, at the top in order to overlay it with this one. So that's why we actually are able to uh, animate this properly, having the same width and also the same height. So it kind of gives you, gives you a view on how you can do it. So let's go ahead and animate on each tab over here. So the tra we have the transition, which is the animated node, and we also have the index. So if you can see right here, we have the opacity. So this opacity is going to be for the children. So in the last part, we were able to clone able to organize things to look uh, more like this, even though I had to modify it privately, but there is no much difference there, just that we added some custom fonts, increased font size, and also made it to look more bold and more neater. 
So that's just exactly what we did. So let's now go ahead and uh, create the admission values for these ones. So for the opacity, before we start that, we have to get a transition to actually check whether we are on current tab, like let's say something like an active transition. So we can say it's active, which is going to take the transition property. So I think I didn't, okay, I brought it down. It's going to take the transition property and check for the index, which is going to return a true value. So it's going to check whether the animated node here is same thing with the index node. And if that happened to be true, we just want to create an active transition, which is going to take the with transition, depending on the one you want, if you want to use the with spring, but let's go ahead with the with transition. And we can now pass the active transition. And for this one, we're gonna increase the duration because we want it to be a bit faster than the background transition uh, translation. So at the bottom here, we can now start creating our animation. So for the opacity, since the default value is zero, we can interpolate with the active transition. We want the input range from zero to one. As it's going from zero to one, we want the output range to go from one to zero. Then for this one, for the clone opacity, so the clone opacity is for the cloned element. So this clone element is actually the original element, but the active element that is actually showing on the current tab is not the, uh, the original element. It happens to be the clone element because the original element here, we are, we are actually hiding it. So we don't want it to show, but we only want the original one to show. So what I have to do now is to create animation using the interpolate, which is going to take an input range of zero to one and also an output range of zero to one. And for the width, we also have to create, uh, so this width, let's go ahead and track that down. So if you can observe here, the width we see here is actually going to shrink because we want the original one, the one we want the clone elements uh, with to actually expand. So that's why we actually, we have to animate the width. So let me go ahead and animate that, which is going to take an interpolate of active transition. And it's going to take an input range from zero so I want it to be a bit faster. So the output range is going to be zero segment and segments. So let's go ahead and kind of try to use these animation values. Let me just go ahead and click on this and automatically you can see we get currently right now, what you, what you can see on the tabs that are not active is because the width is zero. So that's exactly what you see over here. So at the default, when it is rolling back, it's going to come back to zero. But whenever we are active on that, it's going to actually expand our width. And that's exactly what is happening here. So I think I didn't explain better in the first place, but this is a kind of clear example or clear explanation of what we are actually doing. So lastly, we have to create for the trans icon. So the trans icon is for the way you can see this icon go from right to the left. So that's exactly what you want to do right now, which is actually very simple as well. So we have to interpolate with the value active transition. So we have input range from zero to one. So we have an output range of 10 to zero. So 10 means from the right. So if we add negative 10, it's going to come from the left. And let's go ahead and save that. And let's click on this. You can see we have, if you can observe the, the animation kind of comes from the uh, right side. So if you want this to take a, little, a, a longer time, you can even increase the milliseconds. So let's click on this so that you can actually see it uh, do smoothly, but 100 being 100 is a bit faster. So that's how we can actually animate uh, with uh, React Native. 
and also create some cool tab bar animations. So guys, if you really enjoyed this video, do make sure you hit the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to uh, drop me some suggestions you think that whether we can really do it with AI Native and we are going to see how we can do that. So thank you for watching and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.